everybody. This is Grumpalina. She's my super grumpy cat. So basically I'm using my own laptop and I'm going to take you through how to use the graph software that's going to allow us to make really cool pictures for our Connex project. So here's our icon right here and it opens up the graph software and looks just like this. Notice that when it pops up it doesn't have a grid on it. It just gives you the x and y axis. If you click on this button right here that looks like the axes it's going to allow us to show the grid, but we have to do it for the x-axis. See how the x-axis tab is highlighted? Show grid. And for the y-axis, show grid. And it's not very um, easy to see this, but these grids are actually not squares. So that's the next thing I want you to do. If you go up to zoom and hit square, now everything is a perfect square. You could kind of see it change a little bit. It was close to being a square, but not exact. So now that we are working with a square grid, it's going to be a lot easier to make our picture. So I've begun a picture already, Balloon Man, and notice that he is almost done. He's missing a few things, though. I was thinking that maybe we could put some ears on him. So I'm thinking that he needs maybe some ellipses right here and here for ears. So I'm going to show you how we're going to type in equations and how we're going to move them around and put them exactly where we want them to show up. So I'm going to go up here to Function, and I'm going to click on Insert Relation, and that's going to let us do our Connex. So in the Relation space, I'm going to type the equation of an ellipse. So just take a look here. If this is where the ellipse should go, its center is about here, where the point of this arrow is. So it looks like it's maybe at, I don't know, negative 1. And these grids are going by 2s right now. That's another thing, actually. Let's change this around. If this is, yeah, see, I can change my grids to go by 1 each by zooming out. That's easier to work with now. So then now let's take a look again. If this is where I wanted to put the ear... It looks like maybe it's at negative 1.5 and about here if this is 7 this is 6 this is 5 so it's about five and a half so I'm going to center my ellipse at negative 1.5 5.5 and let's see what we can do from there so again let's go to insert relation and I'm going to do X plus 1.5 all squared. Divide that by some really small value. Remember that this number that you're dividing by is the distance, like if I'm looking at this blue ellipse right here, the number I want to divide by is that distance right there squared. I'm just going to put, I'm going to put a 1 for right now and let's see if we need to make it smaller. Plus y minus 5.5, we're going up 5.5, square that, and we want it to be a little bit longer, right, the ear should look more like the body here, so I'll just divide that by 2, and we're going to set that equal to 1, and remember, this is just a computer, we can always change what we typed in, I'm going to also change the color to whatever color I want, even has custom colors up here. Oh, so let's take a take a look. I think maybe that's what I did for the face. So we'll try that. And there it is. Whoa, that is way too big. Way too big. So we need to cut down on both this distance and this distance. So also notice that it's not filled in. So we're going to fix those two things right now. So I'm going to double click on the equation that I just typed in, which is right over here. I'm going to change this number that I was dividing by. One was actually too big. Let's make it 0.2. Let's just change that. I'm going to hit OK and see what happens. Ah, much smaller, but I think we even want smaller than that. I'm going to go to 0 0.02. Looks better. Now we got to cut down on the height of this ear. Or else he has huge ears. So instead of dividing by 2, maybe we buy 0.5. Better. 
maybe a little bit more. How about 0.2? Ah, oh, that looks good. The next thing that we need to figure out is to how to fill it in, and then we have to move it back to his head, right? So to fill it in, that's actually really simple. Instead of having an equal sign, I'm going to change that to a less than sign. And now it gets filled in. Now the center is right here. We need to move it down and to the right. So to move it down, I want this y value, this negative 5.5. Let's move that just to 4.5. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was too far down. This is really just a playing around with like maybe a guess and check even method. How about um, five? Five would be in between there. Ah, oh, that looks good. And we should move it over to the right now. So it's at negative 1.5 currently, right? Negative 1.5. Maybe it should be at negative 1.1. Ah, oh, too far. Now it disappeared up behind his head. How about 1.3? Oh, popping out. Maybe a little bit more. How about 0.4? There we go. Another nice thing that it's probably a good idea that you try to do, not necessarily that you have to do it, but you try to make your picture um, kind of symmetrical. And what I mean by that is I put his head and his body so that the y-axis went right through the middle of it. That way, whenever I found the equation for his eye, I knew the equation for his other eye automatically. Right, because it was just that whatever this was at, like x plus 1, this had to be at x minus 1, just to kind of get the other side of the, the y-axis there. So with the same idea, I'm going to cut and paste the equation we just made for the ear into a new relation. So insert relation. I just cut and paste it. Notice that this x plus 1.4 would move the ear left 1.4. I want to move it right 1.4, so I'm going to change that to subtraction. And there's his other ear. Perfect, exactly where we wanted it to be. So, we talked about how to insert relations, how to make them get filled in with color, how to change the color, how to move things around. The other important thing that might be um, good to know is see how my balloons, it looks like, like the blue one is in the front and the red one's all the way in the back. If you're shading things and you want to change the thing that is on top and the thing that's in the back, all you have to do is come over here to your list and actually drag them to where you want to go. So see how the red is at the top? That means it's in the back. If I move it right here, now it's in front. Now it's in back of the blue, but still in front of the green. Now it's in back of the purple, but still in front of the green. And there we go, it's back again. So that's something nice to know. Before we finish up, there's one other thing I wanted to show you, and that is how I can get a graph to just show up part way. What I mean is, see how this red parabola kind of stops here, or I should say starts here, and then stops over here on this side? It's actually really easy to do, and it will come in really useful. I'm going to find the equation over here that's the smile, and that's actually really easy to do because it's red, and it's this line thing over here. So I'm going to double click that. And notice that in this other line here that says constraints, I said negative 0.4 is where I wanted it to start. X stands for the domain, right? And 0.4 is where we want it to end. If we typed it in in the notation that we're used to typing in the domain, it wouldn't understand. So we have to use these less than symbols here. So we want X to be greater than negative 0.4 and less than 0.4. So watch, if I changed these to 1, or just that one side to negative 1, I mean, and this side to 1, see, now we get a huge smile. He looks kind of freaky. I think we should change that back. So negative 0.4 to 0.4. What I really like about this project is that there are many um, right ways of doing things. So you can kind of feel free to be creative. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, you want it to look good. But on this problem right here, there's no reason to pick negative 0.4 and 0.4. We could have gone with negative 0.45 and 0.5. Obviously, like the negative 1, 1, that didn't look good. So you probably shouldn't go with it. But yeah, feel free to do whatever you think looks the best. And then lastly, whenever you finish with your picture, 
you want to make sure that you get rid of the grid and the axes because you just want it to look like a picture. And see this thing over here? This is called the legend. We're going to remove all this stuff. So I'm going to go up here to the axis button again. I'm going to click, unclick I mean, show grid, Y axis, unclick show grid, and in settings, I'm going to go to axis style, we don't want any. Hit OK, and there's our picture. Notice how the red balloon is getting cut off. We want to make sure that the picture can be seen. I'm just going to drag it with the little hand thing here, and there's my full picture. So that looks nice. And then, so now if I want to undo the legend, if I go over here and right click it, it's already clicked to sh uh, check to show legend. I'm just going to uncheck that and it's gone. And now if you wanted to print a picture, I would take a screenshot. There's a little print screen button on your keyboard. Maybe put it in a Word document and then print it out on a colored printer. And that's how we use the scratch program.